So as part of the directions for this assignment, you know, we have lots of animations of transformations. If it is an expression change, it needs to be really, really extreme, right? Or it can be the introduction of something that could be a transformation, or it can be a complete change of state. This is a really favorite example of mine. And that's because even though it looks so simple and it focuses our attention so much on the singular transformation of day to night, think of all of the elements that have to be controlled for that to work. So for one, you have the expression on the sun itself. So that's a change. You have the rotating of the, the rays around the sun. So that has to be considered and kept even. You have the, the pull chain and the hand moving down is one. So that's just one element. And then you have the, the hands on the watch on the wrist that have to move. And actually the most technically difficult thing in this animation is that rotation of those hands. And notice how they don't actually get it quite right as polished as this animation is, it jumps at the end of it, right? Now, this is the mistake that an, an amateur might make doing the same idea. They would think, oh, I want my clock to turn, but I want my clock to be turning while the hand is pulling it down. And that's too many things to animate at once, like one movement and a rotation within that movement. So you want to think things through and isolate the, the aspects you want to pay most attention to. That's where your sketch really comes in. It shows you what we pay attention to as the viewer. Notice that even though a story is made of character setting the illusion of time passing, I'm letting the setting be entirely implied. I could have this be a blue background. I can have it be a gray background. I can have it be a black background. I can have it be a white background. Doesn't really matter because we're focusing on the character changes. So I'm just going to leave it as a white background. I'm also going to compose it in a square that's going to make it the, the most uh, kind of formulaic. If you look in the directions of the assignment, at the very bottom, where it shows the three things you're going to turn in, it also shows a link to a mentorship, a past semester mentorship presentation by Gersom, who walks through how to animate within photo p right so i'm going to do the same thing that is outlined very capably by him and just to practice the animation this is not something you're required to do but it might be helpful for you just to get used to the animation tools we're going to animate my my sketch and what we get from that is a very rough stick figure animation it's called an animatic so i go to photo p I've already saved my sketch as a JPEG, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the image so it's black and white. I'm going to use my rectangular marquee. I'm going to grab my first panel and I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate it on its own layer. Then I am going to hit Control T and I am going to make it big into the bottom right hand corner. And then I can use my guides and bring that down so I know where the top of it is. Okay, then I'm going to turn that layer off, go back to my background, do it again with the next eight panels. Grab it, duplicate it, control T, enlarge it, all the way down. And if I need to, maybe squeeze it into this format, right? Because I hand drew my squares. And so now I have two panels, one, two. Now GIFs are low resolution because they're, they're only made to be shown on a screen. So this gives us a little bit more leeway. We don't need to be super refined. Control T, not Command T.
Okay, I've got my first three frames then. So frame one, frame two, frame three. And you can see that as I'm making these duplicates, they're labeling themselves layer one, layer two, layer three. Because what you need to animate is you need sequential images. And there's a lot of repetition in animation, doing steps over and over again. As long as you're understanding what the result is you're going for. And depending on your storyboards and your ideas for story, you'll be spending longer times on different steps than I am. And may, maybe speeding through things that I take a long time to do. It just depends. If you're kind of stuck while you're doing your sketch and thinking about what aspects need to transform, I recommend looking at the unit module that leads up to the assignment, looking at the past student examples that are given and the ones in Imgur that were parts of students' final portfolios, and that might help you. Because we're working all day today and then all day next class on it. So you want your sketch to be an idea that you understand and that you feel comfortable with. You should challenge yourself, but you shouldn't stress yourself out by not knowing what you're getting into. Okay, that's the last one I did. So I'm on the last two. So I'm just going to do a quick animation of these nine frames of the storyboard. So I'm duplicating from my sketch. I'm enlarging, even though that takes the resolution down. Because GIFs are only meant to be screen resolution anyway. And one of the important steps I'm doing is I'm standardizing the format of each one, making them fit within the same space. And now the last one. Now Photoshop has tools within it where you can animate all within Photoshop. And at least the last time I used Photopea, it didn't have that capability. So we have another program we can use. But I'm going to check and see. Yeah, we still don't have that capability. That would be nice. OK. So now I need to get rid of my background layer. I don't need that anymore. So I can throw it away. And now I have nine frames, right? And I'm going to crop it to that square. And if I'm not sure it's a square, what I can do is go to image, image size. And I can make sure, but it's 576 by 576 pixels. So it's a, a nice square. Now, the actual resolution I want for my finished animation is eight inches by eight inches. So I'm going to make it that by 100 pixels per inch. OK, so now I have nine frames. I can do a rough animatic just by playing, turning on the layers in reverse order here. Now, this is the, the crummy part because we don't have the tool just within Photopea. I need to output each of these as its own JPEG. 
So it's just a little bit of a, a burden. So I'm just going to say start with layer one. Oh, I'm going to get off the crop tool here. And say file export as JPEG save. Okay. And then turn off layer one. It reveals layer two. Say file export as JPEG and then save. And then if you look at downloads, it's going to save them with the same name, but it's going to add a new number after each one. So that's layer zero, basically, or frame zero, frame one, on from that. Export as JPEG. So you got to standardize each of your frames. And I'm not hurting my PSD file at all because I'm just outputting new files as JPEGs. So nine new files. This is why if you're doing it with freeware, it's a good idea to simplify it as much as possible because all of your finished frames you're going to have to output this way. And then last one. All right, so now within downloads, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine frames. I'm actually going to add to the end of this one in parentheses a zero so that when I line them up by name of file, they're in the right order. Okay. Then I'm going to put all of those into a folder. These are going to be my animatic frames. So I know where to find them. And I can organize that, that folder in order uh, just by the file name. Yeah, so they're all in order. If I want to group this so it's three on three, I can do that. Arrange them by name. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to close this. I don't need it anymore. And I go back to the assignment. And because I can't actually make a GIF from Photopea, I need to use one of these sites, either free gift maker or easygift.com maker. And then where it says upload photos, I have to navigate to my assignment. So I go to exercise or assignment three, and I go to my folder of my animatic frames. They're all in order. Select them all, and I say open. And this can sometimes happen. They came in, and they come in in the order in which that website can upload that information. So they came in in a different order. So we drag them to get the order right. And I'm using my guide here to kind of show me the right order. So it's very hands-on. after no this is at the end <laughs> 